It's my firm belief that every video game is about something. Now, that doesn't mean I think every game is tackling heady narrative themes like The Last of Us, but even the most basic arcade game communicates some kind of idea. Tetris is a test of spatial reasoning that stresses the importance of both good planning and quick adaptability when those plans go awry. This year's Pikmin 4, for instance, may not have a deep story, but it teaches players about the concept of Dandori and has them practice it through gameplay. Look hard enough and you'll realize that no game is ever truly meaningless. And whenever I share that philosophy, I inevitably get one question. Oh yeah, wise guy? Well then what about Mario? Okay, surely the series about an Italian plumber who hates turtles doesn't have much to say other than Mamma Mia! But that's where the fantastic Super Mario Bros. Wonder comes in. It's not just a great platformer that transforms the series in all the right ways, it's Nintendo's mission statement declaring what Mario is all about. Hi, I'm Giovanni Colantonio, I'm the gaming section lead here at Digital Trends, and I'm here with my review of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now, usually a 2D Mario game would need very little introduction, and in some ways that's true here too. Without seeing a second of footage, you probably know what you can expect from this. Bowser hatches another vaguely evil plan that Mario has to thwart by traveling to a handful of themed worlds and completing 2D platforming levels filled with coins, power-ups, and secrets. Yes folks, this is indeed a Mario game full of running and jumping. But what's exciting about this adventure is that Nintendo makes a real effort to reinvent the series. And that's important because 2D Mario games had become kind of stale in recent years. The new Super Mario Bros. series is perfectly fun, but those games rely heavily on retro nostalgia by remixing a lot of familiar ideas from older games. The platforming was solid, but there weren't many surprises to be found, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder feels like Nintendo realizing that surprise is what Mario is truly about. So, how does Mario Wonder accomplish that? It starts with an aesthetic overhaul. Mario's no longer exploring the Mushroom Kingdom, but the all-new Flower Kingdom, which comes with a much-needed visual refresh. I honestly think this might be one of the best-looking Switch games out there, purely thanks to how vibrant and detailed these levels are, bathed in pleasant light blues that feel almost ethereal. It's almost like you're looking at a Van Gogh painting, but filtered through Mario's cartoon lens. But it's not just the art that stands out. It's the animation, too. Mario Wonder gives us the most detailed animations we've ever gotten in a Mario game, and that brings a lot of personality to his 2D world. Here's a small example. Goombas don't just shuffle around back and forth anymore. When you first see one, it's sleeping on a pipe with a big sleep bubble inflating out of its quivering jaw. That might sound like a minute detail, but it goes a long way towards making the world feel a little more alive. It's like an interactive cartoon, right down to some of its Looney Tunes-esque sound design. It doesn't just feel like something anyone could have cobbled together in Super Mario Maker. Now, when it comes to gameplay, it may look like more of a return to form than a reinvention of the Mario formula. The basics of moving, platforming, and collecting aren't too different here. If anything, it's just a great chance for Nintendo to once again flex its level design muscles. You're getting a wealth of varied stages here that combine Mario staples with new platforming twists that fit right into the old formula. The main difference is that there's an even greater emphasis on secrets here, with more hidden exits and tricky collectibles. That almost makes levels feel more like platforming puzzles at times, which gave me good reason to revisit stages later and try to fully solve them. Nintendo also takes a flexible approach to difficulty in these stages. Each level gets its own star rating, which tells players how tough the challenge is. Those looking for a chill experience can focus on lower star stages, while more seasoned veterans can try their hand at some trickier levels. Not only that, but a new badge system lets players equip a variety of powers, from an extra speedy run to a grappling vine that can latch onto walls. It's a smart perk system that gives players a chance to break out of the rigid Mario formula and find a playstyle that best suits them. That makes it something that can work for kids, casual players, and platforming pros alike. Now while all those are welcome twists, Mario Wonder makes one very impactful change, and that is its namesake Wonder System. 
In each stage, Mario and company can find a Wonder Flower, which triggers some kind of game-changing special effect. In one level, you might find yourself suddenly skydiving through the air, or climbing around on a level's walls from a top-down perspective. Others are even more surprising. One of my favorite wonder effects turned me into a Goomba. Since I couldn't jump, I had to hide behind trees to avoid enemies for a short time. The best effects totally subvert everything you think you know about Mario, throwing every established rule out the window. And it was in those moments that I started to reflect on what I love about Mario in the first place. I grew up playing games like Super Mario Bros. 3, and I still remember the feeling of seeing it played through for the first time. My jaw dropped when I first saw Mario climb up to the clouds. I laughed hysterically alongside my friends when I first entered Little Big World, as we called it at the time. Every moment in those old Mario games was an unpredictable surprise that ignited my love of video games. Any and everything felt possible in a digital world. And I really think that's been missing from the 2D Mario series for quite some time. Recent installments have felt a lot more templatized, like they're checking boxes on a list in order to create something that felt like a Mario game. That's not the case here. Take something as simple as its new slew of creative enemy designs. Rather than just throwing in more Koopas and Goombas, Nintendo has created a whole bunch of original critters that are a delight to discover. I'm personally a fan of Mawmaws with their adorably huge mouths, and Bluebirds that shoot their beaks out like a deadly dart. It feels like a totally new world full of surprises, taking me back to the days of Super Mario Bros. 2. You know, not the Lost Levels one. And there are limits to that too, to be fair. Boss fights don't have the same creative spark, which makes the main Bowser conflict feel like even more of an afterthought than usual. Power-ups feel like a missed opportunity, too. You've probably seen Mario's excellent new elephant form, which is both a fun and funny highlight here, but that same creativity isn't present in other abilities. Mario's new bubble and drill forms aren't terribly exciting, and their applications are stretched thin across such a huge number of levels. There's still room for the series to grow into this new formula if Nintendo decides to keep experimenting with its transformative wonder effects. Though honestly, I kind of hope the next Mario game totally flips the script. What's special about Mario Wonder is that it doesn't feel like any Mario game that's come before it, and that's what makes the series' earliest entries so special too. So let's return to that question I posed at the beginning of this video. What are Mario games about? Well, I think Super Mario Wonder puts it right there in the title. This has always been a series that's encouraged its players to hang on to their childlike sense of wonder. Games like Super Mario Bros. 3 are as memorable as they are because they're full of delightful discoveries. They leave you curious and excited to find out what's next. You're always rewarded for poking and prodding the edges of the screen, like when you first discover a warp zone by running on the ceiling in Super Mario Bros. That's exactly what Super Mario Bros. Wonder does so well too. Every level sets out to subvert any expectations that have been ingrained in you from playing decades of Mario games. It still feels familiar and nostalgic, but not to the point where it feels like a set of stages that were churned out of a level editor. The parts where it feels most like a Mario game are, ironically, where it feels least like one. It's those moments where I'm suddenly running on top of a runaway snowball as it smashes through a flagpole that I really feel like that wide-eyed kid again. The one who saw Skyworld for the first time and couldn't stop dreaming of what was next.